Assalamu alaikum. You're watching Views and News, and I'm Faisal Rahman live from our Istanbul studios. Today we'll be talking about the Afghan peace process, Afghan peace deal. Now, the actual problem which Pakistan identified in our foreign minister, Mr. Shah Mahmood Qureshi, was very pertinent. He was to the point, and he said that we should be aware of these spoilers. He said that a few days ago during an interview to Reuters, and now this is exactly what has happened since the president of Afghanistan, Mr. Ashraf Ghani has very categorically mentioned that we will not release those 5,000 prisoners held by the uh, government of Afghanistan. These were the Taliban prisoners, whereas in, those, uh, in, in this particular matter, they were supposed to release 5,000 and 1,000 uh, prisoners would also be released from the Taliban side. Now, since this was a part of the deal, but the president of Afghanistan, in fact, said that this was the deal between the Taliban and the Americans, not with the Afghan government and the Taliban. Now, secondly, because if this process was supposed to be concluded successfully, the next phase was about the intra-Afghan dialogue. And the Taliban, they have very categorically mentioned that they will not uh, hold the intra-Afghan dialogue unless and until the 5,000 prisoners are released. Now, that's a prerequisite that was decided earlier. Now, in return, the war has started once again. Infighting has started once again, and according to the latest reports, around 40 U.S. soldiers, and, uh, they have not attacked the U.S., by the way, but the Afghan forces. The Taliban, they have killed around 40 of the Afghan uh, military men. In Kunduz, as well as uh, you talk about uh, the other part, that is Hillman, 43 different checkpoints, I remind you, 43 different checkpoints came under attack by the Taliban in which a number of uh, Afghan soldiers lost their lives. In return, when the Americans retaliated, and according to their reports, they have been able to kill around 24 Taliban fighters also. Now, the problem has started, and this was the main concern of Pakistan, that at least Afghan government should play a very positive role. And they have criticized our foreign minister for his positive role. Interestingly, they said that this is a domestic problem of Afghanistan, and we'll deal it ourselves Pakistan is not supposed to say anything regarding uh, this matter now as we all know that Pakistan has played a very important role in this entire peace process but in return what the expectations were they have come true the spoilers they have played their role but still there is hope how much hope is left we'll be talking about that uh, we have with us in our studio to talk about this on my right is Dr. Nazir Mehmood Saab, senior columnist, senior journalist. So thank you very much. And we have with us Dr. Professor Rifat Hussain Saab, senior strategic analyst and an IR expert. So thank you very much. Thank you so and much. And we'll be shortly joined in by Brigadier Tait Said Dazir Saab, who's a senior analyst as well. Uh, but starting from you, Nazir Saab, first of all, sir, Mr. Trump says that he had a very productive talk with Mullah uh, Brother Ghani. And that went on for about 35 minutes and he said, well, I had a very productive talk with Mullah. And right after that, said, this is what we have witnessed. So where is this peace deal, peace process heading now, sir? Nazir Saab? Well, uh, in fact, in one of the previous programs, I mentioned my apprehensions about the whole process. And I was not hopeful from the beginning. Why? There are a couple of reasons for that. Number one, uh, the Afghan government, which should have been part of the negotiation, the Afghan government was not invited. So the agreement was signed between the Taliban and the US. And before the signing of the agreement, uh, American Secretary, Defense Secretary Asper yep. was in Kabul and he negotiated with uh, Ashraf Ghani and both of them announced that they have agreed. Who? Ashraf Ghani has, had agreed to discuss with Taliban and in that declaration also there was no mention of prisoner release. When the agreement came out, it clearly mentioned that uh, 5, Afghan, government, Afghan yes. government would release 5,000 and Taliban would release 1,000. Now, the, where are the prisoners? Prisoners are under the custody of the Afghan government. But sir, interestingly, there was another report that the biometric has started off the prisoners. In certain prisons, around 200, 400 people were, uh, con this, this biometric was conducted. So there was something happening on, on that level as well, sir. But it was not announced by the Afghan government. That, that is my, my question is that if Afghan government was supposed to release and if they had agreed, then when Asper, Defense Secretary, American Defense Secretary was in Kabul, both of them should have announced that we have agreed to release. That announcement was not done. 
So my uh, uh, concern is, or my hunch is that probably Ashraf Ghani did not issue this statement without American consent. I think America is in the know, and this is a deliberate attempt to sabotage the, the agreement. Because what happened today, after Taliban started attacking their check post, US has also initiated attacks. And Afghan uh, Taliban have clearly mentioned that we will not attack American Americans. forces and we will not kill them. So who are they killing? But sir, if you remember, there was another part of the agreement that all those who are pro-American and those fighting along with the Americans, even the foreign troops, they, hmm. will, not came un uh, they will not come under any attack. Yes. So, so the Afghan forces, whether it's police or the military or whatever, or any sort of other paramilitary forces, if they have come under attack, don't you think this is also a sort of, uh, you know, shying away from the agreement by the Taliban side, sir? Of course, of course. Now, then that means Taliban who, who, are, who are being killed on both sides. If Taliban are being killed, they are also Afghan. If uh, uh, Ashraf Ghani army, Afghan uh, National Defense Army, their soldiers are being killed, they, they are also Afghans. So in that process, I think both are responsible. Uh, first of all, Taliban, sh I think that more than the Afghan government in this particular case, Taliban are more responsible. Why? Because the agreement signing with US and without Afghan government, they should not have insisted that they would not talk to Afghan government. If they would not talk to Afghan government, how can they expect that they would release the prisoners? So that is the first mistake. Second mistake, that once the agreement was signed, and even if Ashraf Ghani had released that statement, this immediate retaliation and they started killing their own people, Afghan people, I think it was a bit, a uh, very hasty response from the Afghan Taliban. They, they shouldn't have done that. Ashraf Ghani shouldn't have declared immediately that we would not release, and in retaliation, Afghans, it was very right that uh, Mullah brother talked to Trump and they negotiated it, but uh, before initiating and attacking uh, the check posts, Afghan Taliban ideally should have talked to America and both to Af Ashraf Ghani. Otherwise, you know what will happen, what I foresee. I foresee that these attacks will continue and the whole agreement is, is now at stake. So I don't see any way out unless Taliban agree that they are going to talk unconditionally to Afghan government. So I blame more Afghan Taliban than the Afghan government. So your take on the same well, point? Uh, my take is a little bit different. I think there was a an element of insincerity and there was a and that led to a design flaw. By whom? Insincerity on the part of the both the Americans as well as the Taliban while they knew pretty well that some of the conditions that have been negotiated, that have been put in the agreement, uh, there are three or four uh, parts to the agreement, uh, and those conditions uh, will never be met, number one. Number two, design flaw in the sense that, you know, the as uh, Nadir Sahib has rightly pointed out, it would have been much better if some representation would have been given to the representative of the Afghan government. Even though, though they claim it's Afghan led, Afghan no, owned. No, but you know, if it's Afghan led and it's Afghan owned, then all the contending parties who have a direct stake in the in the agreement exactly. should have been made part of the agreement, which 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 was never done. So this was a partial agreement. It was a partial agreement between the Taliban as well as the Trump government, and both were under compulsion because the Taliban wanted to be recognized as the legitimate stakeholder. So by signing the, the deal with the, uh, with the Americans, they got that objective. American government was, was under pressure because uh, uh, Trump is going to face next election, and he wanted to prove it to the, uh, to, to, the, to the international community or to the domestic audience that, look, I am fulfilling my campaign promise there, on, on which, which was made about four years ago. Uh, and, so, uh, and, and then, if you look uh, very clearly, uh, the, uh, at the time of before the signing of the agreement, there was a speech that was delivered by uh, Secretary of State Pompeo. And, uh, uh, and th that's very interesting that he had mentioned six or seven conditions and he said that this is a condition based agreement. Mm. So which means that, you know, the, and what were those conditions? Those were the most of those conditions were to be met by the by the uh, by the Taliban. So he said that if those conditions are not met and that 
and and those conditions were repeated in a statement uh, to which uh, nazir sahab has referred when uh, asper was in in kabul when he held a joint press conference with the uh, with uh, ashok ghani so he he repeated those conditions so he said that if none of these conditions is is fulfilled then all bets are off so which means that you know they were they were pretty sure that you know the condition that they are put in the agreement will never be fulfilled and so that's why i'm saying that there was an element of insincerity built into the agreement exactly. and it was not negotiated in good faith and mm. it and the mm. uh, the entire mm. burden uh, was put put on the taliban mm. and the taliban said that look we we will not we will not initiate hostilities we will not attack the afghan forces but this is exactly what they ended up doing and there was there been back and forth retaliation and the only hope that i have is is the is the uh, telephone call that president trump made to mullah brother in which you know they uh, they were uh, contents of the uh, the uh, the conversation have been also leaked in which the the mullah brother he spoke on behalf of the afghan taliban only and he assured the american president that he would uh, that they would like to maintain the agreement so there will not will be no more further attacks but it's a fragile peace it's a brittle peace and and both the parties know that the condition that they put into the agreement which which was in in itself it was a partial agreement will never be fulfilled at the so, end of the day sir when you talk about the release of the 5000 prisoners from the government side i mean they can always you know do that in 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 various breaks uh, like for example they can release 1500 or 1000 initially and then they could see uh, how it proceeds further sir if you allow me if you allow yeah, me sir you, we have been joined in by rahimullah yusuf zai sir let's see what he has to share with us rahimullah sir assalam alaikum wa alaikum salam sir first of all thank you very much for taking out your time and talking to ptv world now sir since we are talking about this peace deal uh, between the americans and the taliban now it seems that uh, it's getting derailed your take sir what's going on I think it's too early to say that this agreement uh, will get derailed. Uh, there are matters of concern which uh, are being highlighted, but I think that uh, you know this phone call by Trump to Mullah Biradar uh, that again has raised hopes that uh, both sides are committed to implement the agreement. Uh, also, I think the Taliban decision yesterday. to meet for the first time an afghan government delegation in qatar that is also a very hopeful sign until now taliban were refusing to even recognize or uh, what to speak of holding talks with the afghan government so taliban considered that they had to meet this delegation which was sent by the afghan government to discuss solely the issue of the prisoners exchange and taliban have a commission for prisoners so its officials will meet this six member delegation from kabul uh, i think another uh, you know sign that taliban are not uh, really much concerned about this american air strike on their fighters in helmand province is that today the taliban spokesman sohail shahin said that under their understanding with the us the foreign forces can attack taliban fighters if they are preparing to attack the afghan government forces or the foreign forces so they in fact are justifying this attack by the americans because taliban were preparing an attack in helmand province against the afghan forces and the us came to the rescue of the afghan forces and attacked the taliban fighters so i think in a way you know there's they are trying to find justification for whatever is happening taliban say they have presumed attacks against the afghan forces because this reduction in violence understanding was only for one week it was primarily with the us forces and not with the afghan government so you know i think that uh, you know if all is not lost i think uh, you know there are efforts being made and the fact that zalmi khalizad after meeting taliban leaders yesterday in qatar has reached kabul today to discuss all these issues including the issue of prisoner exchange and mike pompeo has been tasked by president trump to talk to president ashraf ghani i think this could lead to some breakthrough 
So primarily what I've understood is that you seem to be pretty hopeful, sir. You still believe that this very, very fragile peace process is not into a grave doubt yet, sir. You know, who was uh, expecting that this was going to be easy? Uh, it was unbelievable when the Taliban and the Americans started talking 18 months ago. Who could have imagined that they would reach a peace agreement? So I think these uh, things have happened, and that raises hope that now all sides have decided that there is no military solution. They have to talk. There would be challenges. There would be violations. But I think they will then return to the table because there is no other way. And, you know, Ashraf Ghani has a reason uh, to be offended and to create hurdles because his government was sidelined. It was not part of the peace talks. And I think that the U.S. has consulted Ashraf Ghani about the release of Taliban prisoners. It's not that they have inserted this clause in the agreement without taking Ashraf Ghani into confidence. But Ashraf Ghani has to show his relevance. He wants the Taliban to agree to a permanent ceasefire before the entry of one dialogue. He wants the Taliban to recognize his government as a legal constitutional government. You know, he has certain conditions, and he feels that this is one card that he's holding 5,000 Taliban prisoners, maybe even more than that, because there are 11,000 Taliban prisoners in Afghanistan. So Afghan government is holding these prisoners. He can use them as a bargaining chip, and that is what he's trying to do. All right. Sir, one last comment. Now, since we all know that uh, during these <clears throat> talks, the Taliban leadership, oh, they were talking from a position of strength, sir. Do you think today's incident, or incidents for that matter, whether you talk about Kunduz or you talk about Hillman down there, sir, uh, primarily they have retained that, sir, the Taliban. They have shown the U.S. government, they have shown the Afghan government that they can hit whenever they want and wherever they want, sir? You know, mm, fighting strength was the mainstay of the Taliban power. And they have used it, uh, you know, whenever required. So they used their military strength to force the Americans to negotiate with them directly and keep the Afghan government out of the talks. They have right. used the military strength now to make a deal with the Americans on very good terms. And they are now using their military strength to, to tell the Afghan government that, you know, they can strike them anywhere. As, as you mentioned, they have killed 20 Afghan soldiers and policemen in these attacks in Kunduz and Uruz Gan. So in a way, you know, they will do it again and again because this is what uh, has brought them to this stage uh, and now they have to attain certain more objectives and they can do it primarily through their military strengths and not through uh, you know any peace process all right thank you very much Yusuf Zaisa for your for your comments now Nazir Saab the two more important areas to sort of talk about one is about the future of these uh, these this process or this peace deal sir do you think after, let's suppose there is another process, there is some sort of an engagement from the U.S. president or the Taliban leadership and there's a truce, maybe for a week or something of that sort. And meanwhile, they sort of convince uh, the Afghan regime to show some flexibility. You know, that is also something very important. And the second most important area is about the trust deficit, sir. Among all the parties, whether you talk about USA, Afghanistan, Afghanistan, USA, Afghanistan, Taliban or Taliban, USA. So there seems to be a disconnect somewhere, sir. As you rightly pointed out, lack of trust. Trust is not there. And uh, primarily, as uh, Dr. Sab also mentioned, it was probably... Is right it the lack of the trust beginning. or lack of will, sir? From the Afghan oh. side, Afghan government? Well, not only Afghan government. Afghan government's lack of will is, of course, there. Because Afghan government, any government who's controlling the capital would not like to share power no matter how limited it is. So though their power is limited to, uh, as they say, 25 or 30 percent of Afghanistan, but at least the capital is under their control. And internationally, 
they are, they are called you know, mm -hmm. president of afghanistan ashraf ghani no matter we like it or not or taliban like it or not so once they are in power in kabul they don't want to share so this lack of will is of course there but more than that i think it is also american lack of will also though america i think says that they want to withdraw but trump is not that naive i think the whole this i would say that this is this is all a, a big drama drama in the sense that the concerned parties all three concerned parties were not involved those who have the prisoners in present afghan government they were not involved so why was america committing to taliban that ta prisoners would be released without the participation of afghan government so i think there is a lack of will on the american side also and probably maybe i am wrong but i think that it is probably pre planned to further trap taliban and america i think in the coming days or weeks will further accelerate their uh, attacks on taliban and taliban i am on taliban side you know their triumphalism i think that is also at fault immediately you know as soon as the deal was signed mm. there was jubilation and they started celebrating that we have won and even in pakistan overjoyed overjoyed even in pakistan there were pakistan some pakistani media personnel also well we have defeated we have defeated soviet union now we have defeated america now look at moscow and look at washington and look at kabul so all this triumphalism backfires i think all parties right now need what they need some restraint they they do not need hasty and ill prepared and ill planned reactions if the afghan government has sent a delegation to doha i think taliban should negotiate without any preconditions sit together and talk because ultimately these are the afghan people who will be making the future of afghanistan when america leaves these are the afghan people so the more they are reluctant afghan government has said that they want to talk are there any foreign troops in the captivity of the taliban sir anyone not that i i know of well, they, well, they there were, were a couple but they were released they were, released, they were a couple, couple but so they were released these are all taliban these are all taliban these are all taliban, these are all taliban. and 5000 is a big number yeah, mind you 5000 so. i don't think that under any circumstances afghan government would be ready to release 5000 taliban because that would ultimately strengthen taliban and who taliban would know population. there was the nature of crime they have committed how many people or what sort of people they have been uh, killing before and what exactly. sort of charges have been framed against them so there is a long process now dr sap there is another important area and that is about you earlier talked about the the overjoyed pakistani media but sir overjoyed pakistani government also because our government really believe that they have done uh, you know whatever they have they have done so far sir that was purely their will and the intention and this was our stance from from day one sir imran khan sub used to say that the way forward is only in talks so finally everything seemed pretty okay but sir foreign minister also mentioned about the element of spoilers yes now whether they these spoilers are sitting within the government of afghanistan whether they are in opposition in afghanistan or whether from india so the kind of influence which we have earlier seen and the kind of tilt of whether abdullah abdullah or ashraf ghani that has that they have a very biased approach to us parks and look at the kind of statements and then on top the spokesperson of the afghan government says that uh, pakistan has got no right to interfere in the domestic afghan issue and uh, the foreign minister shouldn't have said anything about it sir well the uh it's understandable that the uh, if the there's a reaction from the afghan government which is very critical of our foreign minister's statement and pakistan's role in it because they believe and everybody recognizes this that without pakistan's help taliban would have never uh, gone to doha and they would na would not have negotiated with the americans so so they the uh, the afghan government feels that by putting uh, pressure on the taliban and by persuading them to stay engaged in the uh, in in the peace deal process they have uh, pakistan has played a role as a supporting party of the uh, of the afghan taliban uh, even though we are claiming that look we have a limited jurisdiction we have a limited influence over the taliban but the fact remains that the the, the world knows otherwise so that's that's one reason the second uh, and i think that uh, that brings me back to the uh, to the discussion about the role of the afghan prisoners uh, there are 5000 minimum 
number which has been put in the agreement and the number could be even much larger 10000 acha yes, so if the number is say between 7 to 10000 people these are the people who were kept in one of the worst conditions in afghan prison or they were they were some of them were were in captivity for over a 10 over a 10 year period so once once these uh, prisoners are released so this is automatically going to tilt the balance of power in favor of the taliban soldiers because these are their people and if they get out of the uh, the the captivity, uh, captivity mm-hmm. so they will be natural allies so which means that in 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 the uh, number game 5000 will join the afghan uh, forces and that is going to be a threat and secondly if uh, ashwag ghani agrees to this swap uh, uh, of prisoners so what is the guarantee that you know that the 1000 uh, afghan uh, uh, soldiers who have who are in 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 uh, taliban's custody will they be released or not so the one has to uh, and i think that the gani government uh, as pointed out by uh, rahim ul yusuf zai in our program a little while ago is the is they are very concerned because they is, they are going to use that as a bargaining chip for further negotiations and for uh, for uh, evolving a power sharing arrangement with the uh, with the uh, with the with the taliban so gani is not going to uh, in my judgment is not going to Uh, give a green uh, signal uh, as far as the releases uh, concerned yeah. right so so mm-hmm. which means that there is so, and if the taliban would say that now that the, that the number 5000 versus 1000 they the, these numbers have been put uh, as uh, into the agreement so if the uh, gani government uh, is is not willing to release them then the americans have a potential problem because they were the ones who had guaranteed The, you know the to the taliban that you know we release 5000 people and then you know we, we will make it work but then the question is that how much pressure washington can exert on the government in uh, in kabul to force them to to abide by the terms of the agreement so so there are a lot of uh, loopholes and there is a uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, um, uh, gaps uh, which need to be fulfilled and you know Americans have have kicked down the the whole power sharing arrangement into the Afga, into the Taliban court by saying that look it's a it's an internal mm-hmm. problem you work it out amongst yourself without the without the involvement of the Americans so I I don't think that the American uh, involvement is going to be uh, over a period of time it is going to become such an insignificant insignificant factor Americans have to remain engaged with the Taliban. and the afghan government in order to make the peace process uh, make any kind of headway so but without the if the americans wash their hands off because they have got an easy deal but the americans can't afford to wash their hands off because sir the election is in november this was the major card trump was holding sir now that's the point thank you very much grace saab for also joining us earlier we were having a word about this uh, peace deal which seems to be derailed we also had a word with rehmullah yusuf saab he said well it's too early to say that he seemed pretty hopeful but my panelists over here uh, uh, uh professor up said that um, well he was uh, not sure from day one and he said that this could be sabotaged it it happened to a certain level now your take brother sir how do you see thank this thank you going indeed forward sir sorry now? if there was road block and i got late uh, it's been raining also so no worries as long as you're here all is well anyhow i think uh, the main stakeholders are taliban uh, america and of course the afghan uh, stakeholders others including the uh, afghan government but uh, as far as uh, this deal is concerned i suppose the first step it has been a success story the second step is come and there was always doubt about that that uh, it will be there will be game spoilers and there will be uh, some sort of uh, derailment and some sort of uh, delay as well as the moment but, the, the, but the when this document be was being sluggish. signed was being but, typed and everything yeah. because we got it in a no. typed form no. now 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 the point is sir what do you think ashraf ghani had no clue what was going on there in, in qatar that, that what uh, we were talking yesterday to daud zai who was his uh, campaign chief uh, of ashraf ghani and the same question was asked that every no uh, sentence rather each comma and full stop was shared with you 
uh, with the president uh, by Zalmay Khalilzad. How comes that you are hmm. not aware that this prison exchange at Swapur will be taking place? And what is your homework for that purpose? Number one, uh, if th that, that is not a roadblock, but the thing is uh, that is to delay or to, uh, to just sort of assert his weight because his weight has uh, gone a bit, uh, uh, you can say, light. Number one, in front of the opposition. Number two, the, he has not yet taken the oath. And number three, uh, the deal which has been concluded, it is between America and uh, Taliban, and they stick by that and they want to have it as a success story. So in a success story, if somebody wants to put a spanner, uh, probably he can only expose himself rather than derailing it mm -hmm. or uh, uh, you can say delaying it. Uh, I think uh, that uh, first of all, this uh, uh, prisoner sway problem will be uh, resolved because the America is determined, and especially Pompeo has talked to them. And yesterday was in this uh, uh, President Do you Trump think was the, talking the, to the, the talking Secretary, to the Taliban. Uh, Secretary of Defense, Mr. Asper, or Mike Pompeo, the uh, Secretary of State, they can persuade uh, the Ghani government, sir, or Mr. Ashraf Ghani in particular? Yes, of course. Not only persuade, but uh, rather they can dictate what to talk of persuasion. So it will be a success story because there is no way it's because a, his own government is, is so fragile at the yeah, moment. No, so though no, he's no. been declared as the president, but still there are a lot no, of issues. Yesterday, a lot of the way he talked, the way he talked to uh, Mullah Biradar, and he says, "Yes, we have concluded a deal, and I uh, will talk to Pompeo, and Pompeo will be talking to the Afghan government, especially to Afghani, to 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 make the promise." Because everyone to, to hailed uh, about the engagement of the Taliban leadership and the U.S. president, and the president also was very positive. He said, I mean, he always uses this friend, uh, word, uh, friend. He is my friend. Everybody is a friend. <laughs> he <laughs> is a friend. <laughs> so even he said, I talked to Mullah. Uh, no, no, I seemed to be no, a good guy. No, no, but but, but <laughs> that was the weight he, 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 he exerted. Fessel. Rather, he showed it to the, to the Ghani government that I am with the Taliban as far as the deal is concerned. So but it will not No, be. no. Faisal, the most important thing is that there is no way the President Trump facing an election year is going to present this as a compromise, which actually it is, which actually but it is. There's a lot of safe. No, 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 no what I'm saying safe. is that for optic purposes, President uh, Trump would pick up a phone and he will call three or four times uh, his, his, his uh, uh, the Afghan counterparts because they are, the, the deal was struck between the Taliban and, you know, Pompeo, there are reports which suggest that Pompeo was very reluctantly came to Doha to deliver, but he was instructed by the president that he should Why go. was he reluctant, sir? What was the issue? Well, uh, the, the, because he knew something, which is now we are beginning to uh, become aware of, that, you know, this, this agreement is so lopsided. Mm -hmm. It is a partial agreement, and the, it will be very difficult for the Americans to deliver on the promise, especially when it comes to ensuring that the uh, Ghani government will release 5,000 prisoners uh, uh, in, in, in exchange for, uh, for 1,000 uh, people, uh, 1,000 uh, Afghan, uh, uh, Afghan, Afghan troops. So th there are built-in clauses. And then, as, then when uh, Pompeo spoke uh, in, uh, in Doha at the, uh, uh, at the signing ceremony, he laid down certain conditions. And one of the and, and he said mm -hmm. that if the, this is a condition-based agreement, and if none of these conditions are fulfilled, then you know the, we will hold the Taliban responsible for for not abiding by the by the terms of the agreement. So, which means that you know because of these conditionalities, and there is there is also uh, a, a rivalry element because Zalmay Khalilzad delivered the deal, even though he was acting as State Department representative for the uh, reconciliation process. Now, Zalmay Ghali Khalilzad will be the main actor because he is the one who himself is a Taliban. He has a history of involvement uh, with the, uh, with the uh, Taliban and with the Ghani government and with the uh, regional powers. So he is acting as, a, as the key person. So it's somewhat uh, uh, Pompeo's role has been minimized because of the because of the, the special status that, you know, Zalmi Khalil uh, enjoys. And there are people who are also projecting that, you know, if these deals come through and if the, all the American forces withdraw from Afghanistan, in a future power sharing arrangement, uh, 
غزل میں خلیج آدمی ہیو سرٹن رول ٹو پلے آئی تھنک دیٹ از ڈیٹ میک سینس آلسو سر ناؤ دیر واز انادر اسٹیٹمنٹ بائی نن ادر دین دی پریزیڈنٹ آف افغانستان مسٹر اشرف گنی سیز دیٹ دی سرٹن گروپ آف طالبان شوڈ بریک اپ ٹائز ود پاکستان فار دی ریڈیز آف پریزنس ناؤ واٹ از دیٹ سپوز ٹو مین سر نو آنیسٹلی دس از واٹ ہی سیڈ دس واز رپورٹڈ ان دی نیوز آئی تھنک شاہ محمود قریشی ہیز ریسپونڈیڈ ٹو دیٹ ویری ویل اینڈ بٹ یو نو ہیونگ سیڈ دیٹ بوتھ اشرف گنی اینڈ آر فارن منسٹر شاہ محمود بوتھ آف دیم ہیو ریسپونڈیڈ ٹو ایچ ادرس بٹ پرائمیرلی یو نو وی مسٹ تھنک اباؤٹ دی اوور آل پرسیپشن دیٹ از بینگ کریٹیڈ Uh, I talked about triumphalism. You know, from our side also, we have been boasting from the beginning that we have been influencing Taliban and we have played a very important role in bringing Sir, them pri- to our the table. Our Prime table. Minister committed it to Donald Trump yes. that he is going now, to deliver. There are two sides. And he has delivered now, there are two whatever sides. was in, in his capacity. There Sir. are two sides to it. One positive side and one negative side. The positive side is that we say that you know we have brought them to the table and we are genuinely interested and which is right we are genuinely mm-hmm. interested in resolving the problem but the downside of the same statement is that when taliban start attacking and you know uh, killing people there then of course the world community says that if you have that much influence on afghanistan why can't you stop taliban from attacking the people so then we say that we have influence but we have limited influence <laughs> now this creates overall a confused scenario i think we should avoid that this is essentially an afghan problem taliban and afghan government they should be deciding it we have played a role that's it but you know further if we keep issuing statements and all that will to the world community that will not send the right signal it should be left to the afghan people to taliban and to them if they are negotiating very well if they are not negotiating this is their problem i mean we if we keep we have been involved for 40 years now you have to look after your own issues as our well our own sir. interests a- a- and and obviously you you have to protect your interest too and perceptions the perceptions that has been created in the 40 40 years and especially during the past 20 years when taliban were in power and after that also so you know these perception don't come from the air they these perception if the perceptions are there they have solid base and then the fatf sword is also there so we should keep that in mind that you know this association with these groups for pakistan does not play a positive role sir i mean we we say association now the same group was a terrorist now the chief is called as one of the better men now mullah brother this is what he said mullah, mullah brother, brother, brother i mean yeah and he was in prison because he was a criminal if he was not a criminal he was, was here till 2018 for about 6 years and then he was released 2 yeah. years ago yeah. Yeah. and yes. he became the head now what i'm saying is now we're getting sub two important areas here mulla ghani we all know i mean he has a lot of influence and he is the main man who is negotiating but sir at the same time i mean the indians they have a very negative role i have not heard any open statement about the whole peace process from their side but sir they have a lot of influence whether you talk about the Uh, intelligence agency of afghanistan india is or you talk about the role of raw within that institution or you talk about the kind of influence uh, whether you talk about dollars influence or otherwise uh, the influence is there it's a reality do you think they are also playing the role of a spoiler here sir and whatever ashraf ghani is saying at the moment after everything bo- seemed okay was primarily under their pressure sir yes of course there is no doubt about it that uh, the role which they have been playing and especially uh, they were in cahoots with the indians and uh, the first time once the uh, dialogues were scuttled in uh, the mari talks and after that was the news of uh, mulomar mulomar that was yes of course that was another uh, spoiler which they 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 they, they, they openly rather uh, and we were all talking uh, about the timing of yes, this story yeah? yeah and second thing is that uh, the space there are three things why they are worried number one they are not happy with this peace deal because taliban are the main stakeholders in this big peace deal number two uh, will the western border for afghanistan will be coming safer uh, as soon as the peace will be prevailing in afghanistan third thing is what india is doing in uh, kashmir as well as their internal problems so pakistan is a hoax and for that purpose Uh, our concentration will be diverted towards the Kashmir issue more prominently, and they don't want that. 
and fourth, what the about proxies, the concentration of the, the Taliban pro, after the, the peace the, deals? No, Don't the, you think the, they the, can also because this is one of the, the fear the, of the Indians I've been hearing it mm. in, in their television channels also that you know what if these Taliban instead of you know working inside the Afghan territory they look towards Kashmir for that matter. But sir, we all know that Taliban do not have a design beyond the borders of Afghanistan. Yes, so. of course. But the, that psychological boosting for the Kashmiris that will, if they can win, win, uh, win a war uh, through, uh, or rather indirect war, or a uh, guerrilla war from a superpower and NATO power machine, uh, will they can win it from the uh, Indians? Indian is not all that a big power than all the, the, the the Americans as well as the NATO, uh, they use every sort of weapon. But still, they have come to the negotiating table. And the negotiation table is the answer to the problems. So that what will be boosting the morale or the resilience of the Kashmiri people, because they are also fighting for the foreign, uh, against the foreign occupation. That is one aspect which is common. Third thing is that, uh, well, uh, as far as the, 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 once the deal or the peace will be prevailing in Afghanistan, India will be losing automatically their space. And that space will be automatically uh, uh, occupied by Pakistan. Uh, though it will be a slow, pro slow process and gradual, but the perception regarding Pakistan will be getting cleared day by day. More so, the return of the Afghan refugees as well as that uh, weapon trade and uh, more so narcotics. Besides that, all those elements, the, those proxies, which were there, that may be... The, the drug economy the, is almost no, the size of their no, total economy, no. interestingly. Because we were having a rather... Um, this was the only country where we were having the trade credit with them, not deficit, uh, on the Afghan border, on the Afghan side. So I suppose that will be also increased. More so, these proxies which India are the hybrid watch where they were having from the Afghan side, that will be, of course, receding are getting a big jolt. You think they'll so come there are hurt? so many, mm. so many advantages for Pakistan through this peace deal, and so many disadvantages to India. And that's why they will not uh, spare any opportunity, or they will go to any limit to derail it. So that that is obvious, and that is writing all the wall. How to to protect it from the game spoilers? Both in a, uh, I think the USA Afghanistan has a very important has role to play. Mm. Of they need a very safe exit, and that is only possible if all these parties agree. But since there seems to be a problem, I think Americans have enough influence that they can restart the negotiations and can come up with some sort of a viable solution. At the end of the day, it is the matter of the Afghan people, Afghan government. And I think everybody needs to be a little positive, and they need to calm down and always believe in the process of negotiations. Uh, uh, Last quick uh, comment, uh, sir, uh, from you. Very quick comment. I am deeply concerned about this Bonhami new found love that the Americans have generally been uh, found with the Taliban. Because the Taliban have a tremendous disaffection towards Pakistan, the way Pakistan has been involved. And there are many people, even there are groups like Gulbadi Nikmatyar, who were at one time, you in realize. The, uh, the, the, the jihad time, he was blue-eyed boy of our security establishment. But now, if you look at some of the his writings and, you know, uh, and uh, some of his, uh, uh, recently I was reading a biography of, of somebody who wrote about oh, Hikmat Yar, and he had very unsavory things to say about Pakistan. So Pakistan has to be very, very cautious that the, if there is a power arrangement which is tilted in favor of the Taliban with the American help. There has to be a proper equilibrium, there has to be sir. A, there has to be an equilibrium whereby, and the Americans can, are known to have changed sides so many times during the Cold right. War, during these conflicts, that, you know, I cannot trust them. Oh, well, let's see, sir. Next week seems to be pretty important. Mirza, thank you very much. Professor, thank you so much. It was a pleasure having you. And that's all we have for this time. I'll see you, inshallah, tomorrow at 8. Till then, you take good care. Good office.